few words of uh, introduction and explaining why I'm here talking about data sharing. I am a fundamentally in the School of Medicine and Public Health, and I'm very much impressed in the history of uh, epidemics. And the first comment that uh, data sharing, of course, has been uh, for a long time a major preoccupation for physicians. And in fact, My voice is usually quite loud. So I, I was saying that the, the, the history of, of uh, uh, SARS epidemic is very short. The first announcement was made in February 14, 2003, in a small notice in the weekly epidemiological record that this record reported 305 cases and 5 deaths from a very strange respiratory disease in China. Uh, the following month, on the 12th of March, the WHO produced the first alert uh, indicating a new disease and an uh, acute uh, respiratory syndrome or SARS, giving the, to this syndrome its name. Uh, this uh, first alert was followed three days later by a much uh, worried alert and with a stronger emerging travel luxury in order to avoid traveling to, to some countries. In the 22nd of March, so about one month after the beginning of the story, uh, the, the number of cases claimed to, to more, almost 3,000 with more than 100 deaths in 17 different countries in three continents. But uh, after this climbing, uh, the intervention of, pub the public of global health was very effective, uh, actually, as we see, uh, on the 5th of July, WHO declared the end of the pandemic, and the last human chain of the transmission had been broken at that time. So it's a story of four uh, months. Uh, actually, uh, one question is, what made SARS? special that deserve such a lot of attention. From an epidemiological point of view, it's a very little affair because the 3,000 cases and 100 more we had only in Europe. Each season, we had almost 5,000 disease and more than 500 deaths for influenza. So why putting a lot of attention on that? Of course, uh, one of the, the reasons is that the SARS is uh, an emerging disease. But this is not a good reason, because in the last 20 years, emerging disease has been very, uh, very novel. A lot of emerging diseases that have been uh, discovered uh, in the last 30 years. So the reason that there is something special in, uh, uh, in, uh, in 
start. And in order to, uh, to understand this point, it is necessary to, to think about uh, the definition itself of emerging disease. Behind the, uh, the, uh, the attention that the international organization gave to the SARS was, of course, the spectrum of uh, uh, 1918 influenza, Spanish influenza, that uh, was a major disaster in the history of humanity with more than two million people killed in two years. That, that was remained, and still now remain the big a picture behind any kind of uh, attention to a new disease. And SARS, at the beginning, seemed to fit with this scenario. A disease, a viral disease transmitted by air, by drop, droplet in the air, with a very high fatality rate, especially killing young people, exactly like the Spanish influenza, that produce a lot of attention everywhere. So this is the one of the reasons. There are two reasons that when you study an emerging disease, you have three different levels to keep in mind. The first is the understanding of the dynamics of emerging diseases and its causality. This is what, by the way, the first effort made in the WHO. The second aspect is the impact of the health and social condition of the individual population. This was another reason, uh, of, as we see, uh, of the importance attributed to this very special disease, the impact on the way of life. Uh, in one of the documents produced by WHO in the same month of discovery, that they say clearly, if it is going on like that, Start, we change our lives. That it is the, the idea that something important was happening. Of course, the third level is the implementation of research priority and public health measures needed for coping with that. Even there, there was a specialty for SARS because SARS killed mostly uh, sanitary personnel, doctors, nurses, physicians, uh, all the people attending the, the doctor. And that, of course, Caused the disruption of the medical service and not a major impact on public health in the, in the different countries. The second level, I will say also this uh, little analysis of uh, philosophical uh, color about uh, the distinction between different forms of causality in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the emergen emergency of infectious disease because uh, this is important in order to classify exactly the data to be used, what, which kind of data we should share in which context. So uh, there are at least four different causes of influences in the emergence of uh, infectious disease. Of course, the first is the emergence of a new germ or strain by genetic variation, adaptation, interspecific factors, etc. The second is the, uh, the production of new disease uh, caused by this germ. Because, of course, we can have also a new germ, non-pathogenic germs. Probably the number of germs is a, 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 a 1,000 larger than the pathogenic germs. Most of the germs that we have are not pathogenic. So even the emerging of, of, of a new germ or strain must be accompanied by pathogenicity. And so this is the second form of, uh, of uh, uh, causality. That the third is, of course, the diffusion of disease and the origin of epidemic in a given population, which is the local epidemic. And then, of course, the diffusion of the epidemic is on a wide geographical and social scale, what we call dissemination of global epidemic. The important thing is that the causes for each level are different from the others. The Emerging new strain can be given, can be produced by genetic variation or mutation. The production of uh, uh, pathogenicity can be produced, of, for example, by the change in virulence or the change in, in the in immunity of a population. The diffusion, the diffusion of a disease is usually linked to the behavior of individual, sexual behavior, uh, alimentary uh, habits, habits, etc. And the diffusion on a larger scale and mostly linked to trans transportation, so the speed with, with which we can move around persons and things and animals. The special characters of SARS was very clear from the very beginning. 
In fact, in the first official publication by WHO on the SARS, which is called the SARS, SARS reference, in October 2003, let's say three, seven months after the beginning of the epidemic, and there, there was uh, the, the attention given to the fact that this epidemic is, is unusual in high, because of high morbidity and mortality rate, and especially is taking full advantage of the opportunity provided by the world of international travel. The epidemic is, is traveling very fast. The second aspect is that uh, uh, can, this can be really a danger for uh, the public health uh, because it uh, kills mostly nurses, doctors, and other medical personnel, which are the human resources vital for disease control. The third aspect about the surgery and vital, uh, vital treatment for patients with serious conditions had to be postponed. No, nothing was working in the hospital where SARS developed. And that, uh, most, in, in fact, more, the patients with SARS require intensive care in order to survive, and there is no intensive care in a disrupted hospital. And uh, uh, at the same time, hospitals, schools, and borders were closed, as in the 1919 influenza. Uh, with a profound uh, economic uh, and uh, individual impact, and uh, uh, that was a serious uh, threat to international public health because uh, there was no vaccine or treatment. And one thing interesting, what the only thing that can be do that uh, can be done at this time was to apply the very old empirical method of fighting against disease quarantine, uh, isolation, infection control, contact tracing. And this is one important thing for an historian to see that uh, actually what is work is at a very long history behind is already rewarded. So uh, the other aspect already noticed at, at this time in one side the old methods and the other side the use of the new technology in the sense that immediately after the beginning of the epidemic, the WHO established a network of uh, collaborative centers uh, asking 11 leading laboratories in, the, in virology in the world in nine different countries to create a multi-center research in the etiology of SARS in order to develop a diagnostic test. So this immediately a huge data sharing and data the diffusion at the, at the beginning. And uh, uh, the lesson from this point of view is that in order to, to curb with the serious new emerging diseases, scientific collaboration and data sharing is essential. SARS has demonstrated how the world can come together in scientific collaboration and what the power of the internet is. 2003 at the beginning of the story, and this was the reason for the limitation of the explosive spread of the outbreak. So the, the old methods with only a new technology, data sharing, internet, electronic measures, etc. And as the, the director, director general of WHO said, immediately uh, during the epidemics, SARS has been a wake-up call. It has shown us the potential gain for international collaboration, as well as some of the pit fail when the collaboration fails. This is the, the very strong critics against, against China, who was the, the country of origin of SARS, that refused to diffuse the change, the change information, provoking, uh, provoking uh, more than 3,000 uh, cases because exactly of this uh, uh, pitfall in the in a collaboration. Anyway, so we have this new entity that uh, was immediately recognized and with a, a, a fundamental paradox, perhaps two uh, paradoxes. 
linked to the source. To the, source. the first is that uh, this kind of disease, before globalization, uh, would have caused uh, uh, just a few sporadic and uh, isolated cases without any serious consequence outside its more geographic context. So the reason for the, the spread of the disease is linked to globalization. This disease is the first real disease of globalization, and the first pandemic, by the way, of, new, of the new millennium. It's a disease of globalization. Uh, actually, very simple to calculate. If uh, in the 19th century, it would take eight days to make the world tour, now it's 48 hours. So uh, the same speed is uh, uh, used by vectors and virus to move. So this is dramatic change. And, and this is one of the things that create the emergency and uh, uh, the new disease. The second paradox is uh, even more interesting from our point of view. There are, in one side, very old methods of coping with the disease, early tracking, identification, and isolation of patients, uh, the isolation, identification of chain transmission, all practice that was already there for the 14th century, management of close contact, quarantine, travel transmission, public information, education to uh, 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 recognizing the symptoms and to report the symptoms. These are very old methods, but at the same time, wide use of modern technology and data sharing. Internet for the, excuse me, I forgot something in Italian. The internet for the diffusion of, of news, and especially the clinical and the epidemiological data, and the sharing of data between laboratories. That in just two months, brought all the necessary knowledge for fighting effectively against the disease. This is the spread of, of, the, uh, of the disease. Uh, Hong Kong, Hanoi, Singapore, Philippines, Australia, and Vancouver, Toronto. This is the, the three continents in which the source took place, these pandemics. And this is the method used to uh, study the disease, starting from a single person reconstructing the chain of transmission in individuals. In such a way, for example, it was possible to study the diffusion of the cases in Hong Kong starting from just one single uh, doctor, a Chinese doctor in the, in the red room in the, in the ninth floor. There was infected 12 people that started the epidemics in Hong Kong and both successively in Canada because one of the 12 that was a Canadian woman. It was also possible to exactly identify the person in the plane where this woman traveled from Hong Kong to, uh, to Canada and to reconstruct exactly what kind of uh, pathogens were necessary for the spread of the, of the epidemic, reconstructing exactly the destiny of, 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 of a, single, a single person. This was the method uh, uh, used. Now, I, uh, I would like just to go uh, into some detail in order to show how uh, data sharing was important in coping with this uh, uh, public health threat. I would like just to uh, uh, follow with you the chronology of the event, that ha how it has been reconstructed by the, uh, the study, epidemiological and also uh, individual studies. Of, uh, uh, of the cases. So the chronology starts in November 2002 when there was uh, the, the announcement of very peculiar case of pneumonia in China, in Persian city in the province of Guangdong. And uh, in the uh, 11th February, WHO received from the Chinese Minister of Health the announcement of uh, this special uh, acute respiratory syndrome without many deaths, just saying that it was a special case of pneumonia. On the 12th uh, February, uh, WHO was informed of the outbreak that uh, affected the six other municipal municipalities, but then the laboratory analysis was negative for the influenza virus. So th there is no influenza, there is something something very special, and other infectious disease was routed out immediately. 
So this is the, the, uh, the epidemic curve uh, from the onset in China, and you can see that the peak of this epidemic in February and March 2003. Uh, successively, uh, on the 20th of February, Hong Kong officials informed that virtual in the outbreak of two cases, one fatal of uh, avian influenza that was going on at the same time, confusing a bit the sea. On the uh, 21st of February, uh, a, a medical doctor coming from China uh, checked in in the ninth floor of the hotel at WC and in such a way to 12 other guests and visitors were infected. Uh, most importantly, in the 26th of February, a 48-year-old Chinese-American businessman was admitted in the French hospital in Hanoi with uh, some respiratory problems. He had previously been in Hong Kong, where he visited a physician coming from the Guangdong province. This person was the origin of the uh, official story of the event. In fact, this person was visited by Dr. Carlo Urbani, that was a WHO official based in Vietnam, who was profoundly alarmed by the particular uh, state uh, of this atypical pneumonia. And immediately he notified the WHO regional office of the Western Pacific with an email say something strange is going on. In the first case, he saw, immediately shared this information with WHO, the, uh, the regional office and the uh, 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 headquarter in Geneva. Uh, immediately after other cases, we don't have to go into the details that will be reserved eventually for, for the publication, and other cases are uh, announced in our goal. And uh, uh, on the fifth, of March, a few days, Dr. Urbani continued to treat uh, this doctor, but also started to treat the personnel of the Hanoi Hospital. Nine persons that uh, went to, to be uh, ill of new diseases, and then what uh, a serious problem. Uh, altogether, 14 members of the staff of the French Hospital in Hanoi were ill with their acute respiratory syndrome, and was a special uh, case. Three days later, uh, Dr. Urbani departed from Bangkok for giving a lecture in a, in a congress on tropical diseases. Immediately, he noticed that uh, something was wrong, and actually he discovered himself that what he had a new disease. So he had to be isolated in airport before going to be hospitalized, and he died of the disease on March 29th. I think it would be uh, important also to mention this physician, uh, Dan Urbani, the died of, of the source, that according to WHO was the first actually to raise the alarm about the new diseases. And it is interesting because it's also the problem of not only the data sharing, but also the person that created the data to share. And Dan Urbani was important exactly for that. He was there at the right moment not for him, unfortunately, but for stopping the epidemic. So notice that they did something strange was going on and diffused the information, sharing the information, and that was important. So, uh, uh, Carlos Pani, that was not really a casualty because he chose, by the way, to remain in the hospital to treat and to study uh, this because, uh, as he said, his destiny was to acquire the necessary knowledge, especially in front of something really new going on, to care and assist the diseased person and to protect the local population. And he paid the high price for, for that. Uh, there is a beautiful phrase quoted uh, in uh, the New York Times after his death. If I can work in such situation, what I am here for? Answer me, may going to pop the parties of pushing paper. So the important is not just uh, answering email, but to diffuse the right information at the right moment. 
sorry, distribution, but I think it is uh, with the uh, cargo finally deserves a bit of attention because nobody knows him, except in Vietnam, where recently made a, a full day of celebration with the all the authorities. You know, and, uh, the occasion, the first, tenth anniversary of the SARS epidemic in urban event. So, going on, uh, in March, the, there was the announcement of other cases, and especially the announcement of, uh, uh, of uh, the epidemics in Canada, right, with two waves in March and successively in May. And uh, at this moment, the WHO uh, raised the level of alert uh, after the three continents were, had been touched, and uh, he announced the uh, uh, emerging travel actually avoiding, asking for avoiding traveling at the same moment, closing the frontiers, and uh, uh, produce uh, isolation in most, uh, in, in most cases. And uh, in, on March 17, so uh, one month only after the first announcement of the new epidemics, WHO set up three virtual networks to expedite research on source in order to find the causative agent to promote understanding of the epidemiological feature and to develop the clinical guidelines. At this period, the number of cases was, of course, increasing and uh, was 210 and 10, but still very limited. But the, the important thing was that something very strange. In, at this moment, also China uh, reports these cases and of course, the cumulative total increased a lot after the, uh, the, the knowledge of the Chinese data. And uh, uh, on March 26, there was the first global grain round on clinical feature. That is a virtual conference sharing data uh, about SARS with 80 clinicians for 13 countries linked together in order to exchange the information and uh, uh, put it available on the WHO website devoted to SARS. So a good example of very quick data sharing in order to increase the efficacy of, uh, of, the, of the research. Uh, there was also other uh, further increase in different cases, especially particularly impressive uh, it was the case in uh, uh, Hong Kong well, uh, there was many cases in a, in a residence uh, where about 5,000 people live, lived in Hong Kong. The government, following the suggestion of WHO, isolated completely for one for 10 days the 5,000 people, and putting them in a farm outside the city for 20 days, exactly how the municipalities say, in the Italian city in the Middle Ages did for fighting against the Black Plague. So exactly the same, the same in many. At this stage, we, the number of cases are um, approaching 2,000. In April 8 to 10, three research groups published the first result. It was an international cooperative, virtual, no meeting in Geneva, just exchange of information by the internet. And uh, there was very important result. The first was the isolation of the etiological agent, the coronavirus. The second, using a polymerase chain reaction in the identification of the new virus, showing that it was new, it was unknown virus, nobody knew that before. And immediately after the realization of the complete sequence of the coronavirus genome in a, in a few days. Uh, first the Canadian and then the CDC in Atlanta that concluded this report. So, on that base, the following week, the WHO was able to announce that uh, a new pathogen, a member of the coronavirus family, never before seen in humans, is the cause of SARS, the identification of SARS. On May 1st, the complete SARS virus genome is published by two groups in science, and at the same time, 
the uh, understanding of the important push to also the Chinese uh, uh, government to, to do quick. Uh, this is the quickest closing up of the hospital that I never, I ever uh, noticed. In just eight days, 7,000 workers were able to build up a huge hospital and started to, to collect uh, hundreds of salt patients just in eight days. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like, not only Italy. Yeah. Well, uh, the last two the last steps uh, was, of course, the, uh, the, the increasing of the number of cases. At the middle of May, the number of cases was approaching 8,000 with increasing sales with more than 600 deaths in 28 countries. Altogether, uh, most of the cases were still in China. Uh, at the same time, the result of uh, the study of the control measures shows that the, finally the measure that was taken, isolation, uh, contact uh, screening, chain of transmission, was uh, very effective and what discovered also that uh, uh, it was possible to stop the epidemic using the traditional methods, but with the powerful use of the new media technology. The other results at the same time, and down to the May 25th, 23rd, was the origin of the virus. The three research teams in Hong Kong and China announced that actually the reservoir of the virus, which is an animal reservoir, in uh, wild animals that are actually used in China in the, for, uh, for the diet, for alimentary reasons. And that was the animals that uh, was probably the, the, the sources of the, of the new virus uh, because of the contact uh, between these wild animals. Finally, on July uh, 5th, 2003, the WHO was able to report the last human chain transmission of SARS, and the, this chain was broken. No more, uh, uh, no more SARS. And, and the, first can, the first country to be able to do that was Vietnam, the same country where, except China, the SARS uh, started the, its spreading. So it was so effective that in three months, Vietnam was able to eliminate totally this very important danger. So, in conclusion, old methods of fight against epidemics combined with data sharing. That's the lesson of the stars. And uh, the fact that uh, WHO created this network of multi-center research on the theology of SARS with 11 laboratories in different countries was the key for understanding the cause of disease and, how, and uh, the method to follow for stopping the epidemics. Uh, this it was a sort of a virtual laboratory because uh, le, uh, the, on the secure web website of WHO, electronic microscopy was not possible to clinical data, uh, blood testing, everything was put together in a single database uh, as a, a reserved of course for clinical, for clinical purposes. And this multi-central research project on several acute respiratory syndrome parts was the reason for, uh, for the success. These are the few documents of the time in the, in the archive of WHO showing the real process. This Sheffield WHO website was able to collect electronic microscopic picture of the virus, sequences, genome, from the complete genome, the uh, sample for patient, uh, for also post-mortem tissue, and all the laboratory was connected, and the result was shared in real time. And that was possible in such a way to understand perfectly well the epidemiology of the virus and stop altogether and this very important danger. This web the second website was the, the new tool that was necessary for stopping the, the, the disease. So I think this is 
a very good example of, uh, of a case in which data sharing is important not only to preserve uh, scientific data, but also to make this scientific data available for public health strategy in order to cope with the, the new, uh, the new uh, diseases. By the way, in one of the documents uh, published during the epidemics, this was clearly said that usually we use the military uh, vocabulary in order to talk uh, when we talk about disease. We call about the new weapon, new danger, resistance, attack, etc. At the contrary, what we need to know is knowledge about our other members of the biosphere and try to increase the equilibrium, the shift the equilibrium in favor of human population, abandoning the military uh, language in, in favor of the collaboration and sharing of knowledge as the only way to increase the health of human populations. Thank you very much for your attention.